Hey folks, welcome to my full review of the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. So, I've done a first impressions review of this shoe, where I went over the pros and cons and how it fared for me overall after putting in around 10 miles. In this review, I'll go over how this fared for me after putting in 100 plus miles and how it did in the Barcelona 2021 marathon. So, in the first impressions review, I went over a brief history. I'll just touch upon that right now. So, what is this shoe? Well, this is Brooks second marathon racer. They released the first iteration in 2019 and to say the least, it didn't go down well with people at all. Uh, critics and general runners alike didn't like it. Mechanically speaking, it wasn't, it didn't, didn't have a great upper and Brooks even came out and said that it would last only around 50 miles. Which is a lot less what I expect from a marathon racing shoe. So within a year Brooks released the second iteration this one and yeah people really did prefer it over the first and this is the current marathon racer with the carbon fire plate. So let's go on now and speak about the overall Texan specs. So what we have here is we have an 8 millimeter drop and an overall weight of 215 grams, which is around eight ounces. And in terms of the upper, we have a mechanical stretch woven upper. It's very lightweight, it's very breathable. It fits very well, and it's what you'd expect and what you want from a top-end marathon racing shoe. In terms of the midsole, we have a DNA flash midsole, it's called. And so it's a nitrogen infused midsole and it has a carbon fiber plate embedded just in the midsole here. It also has a rapid roll technology which helps, which propels you forward when you're putting in those quicker miles. And for me, it's, I think, yeah, it's an excellent, excellent midsole. It makes you feel really fast and really balancing. It's just exciting. It's just a very fun shoe to wear. On the outsole, we have just rubber here as well for traction purposes. And yeah, it provides for good grip on dry roads mainly. Wet roads, I wouldn't use this really. Um, you know, there's just not enough rubber to justify you not slipping around. But uh, look, overall, it's it's fine. And it hasn't really caused any problems for me. But again, I've only used this really in dry conditions. So that's it with the Texan specs. Let's move on now to how this fared for me after the marathon, the Barcelona marathon, and 100 plus miles generally. Okay, so how does this perform for me during the Barcelona Marathon 2021? I have to say it was absolutely excellent. For full disclosure, I was aiming for a sub three hour marathon. I didn't get that, I got three hours and three minutes. And that was no failure of the shoe. This shoe during the marathon was an absolute delight to run in. It was so energetic, it was so bouncy, and it felt so freeing. I mean, when you're running a marathon or any race whatsoever, you don't want to feel like there's a shoe on you. You don't want it to feel in any way incumbent or heavy or, you know, you don't want, to, you don't want it to feel that it negatively impacts your performance. With this shoe, I had none of that. And it just made me, made me feel fast made me feel free and made me feel like I was just running really well. And even after the marathon, I had no issues with my feet, no blisters whatsoever. And yeah, what can I say? It's a really, really good shoe. Now people opt usually for the Nike runners, uh, the Nike marathon racers, such as the Nike Vaporfly 1 or 2 and the Nike Alpha Fly. Or they go for the Sockley Endorphin Pro or the Adidas uh, Pro, the Adidas Adios Pro 2 or Pro 1. For me, and I have all those other shoes that I mentioned, for me this just outweighs all of them in terms of performance. I think it's just, it's a step above the rest and I can't really explain it I suppose. I mean, yeah it just fits me really well and it makes me feel very, very fast. While those other shoes that I mentioned, they kind of, 
they make you feel a bit clumsy and they're a bit clunky to me. This shoe just feels like a normal racer, a normal runner, should I say. And even though it's a super shoe, uh, because it has a carbon fiber plate in there, and it just, yeah. I can't really say any more about it because for me it's just excellent. And that's it folks, really. I mean, I definitely advise you to consider wearing this shoe. Just check it out at the very least because I don't think you'll be dissatisfied with it. The price itself, its price is 250 euro, but you can get it cheaper. I mean, I, I've seen it in Ireland for 200 euro, 220 euro, and it's well worth that price. And all those marathon racers are up there, the super shoes with the carbon fire plates. So you're paying for what you get here. And it's, it's just, yeah. If I'm running another race, I think I'm gonna choose a shoe as well. Now, I was fearful when I went into the marathon because, you know, I put on over 100 miles in the shoe and I was a bit afraid that it wouldn't perform very well, purely because of the amount of miles that it had in it. Usually going into a marathon, you want to be wearing a shoe that's relatively fresh, that has around 40 or 30 miles in it. This shoe had over 100 miles, as I said, but I have to say it didn't hinder the performance of the shoe at all. Uh, and even after it now, I mean, I, it looks a bit battered, but that's more so dirt than anything. And I think it actually can handle another few marathons if I really want to push it, but I won't. If I'm going for another marathon, I'll probably buy a new um, pair of the Brooks Hyperion Elite, Elite 2s. Simply because I don't want to keep running this to the ground and all of a sudden it doesn't really work well and you know, it's not it's not good either for your feet to keep wearing the same shoe over and over again. But yeah, so overall I have to say it's excellent and I really love it. So that's it folks. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you on the next review.